let's begin. And uh, my first question to you is, Peter, how fucked are we? Um, I suppose that depends on who you mean by we. Uh, life is going to persist. The cockroaches have, have been fine. The blue-green bacteria will be fine. Um, as a species, we'll, I probably will survive. I mean, there's 7.6 billion of us. You right. can't get rid of us that easy. If you're the kind of person who likes playing Xbox or watching Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, pack them in now because you've probably got another 20, 25 years tops before that infrastructure collapses. 20, 25 years? <sighs> well, we're looking at within, within about 10 years, we're looking at the beginning of a series of rolling pandemics that are going to take out the inner cores of most of the metropolitan areas of the planet. Um, preliminary suggestions modeling um, gives us a sense of maybe 40-45% global infection rates, only like probably less than 20% um, mortality rates. But you don't have to die to lose civilization. All you really need is, right. is for the guy who delivers your food and takes away your garbage to call in sick. Yeah. and his backup to call in sick, and for that to happen for a couple of weeks. right? Um, it's basically going to be uh, New Orleans after Katrina Ouch. in every major pl city on the planet. Um, and is that primarily due to you know rising sea levels? Well, what's basically happening with... Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a variable that hasn't really received a lot of attention, although right. it's starting to get more, is that... Um, as the world warms, pathogens change their distribution. Yep. Um, there's, you know, 50 years ago, nobody had heard of Ebola. 20 years ago, ago nobody had heard of, of Zika. Um, these things, there were, until recently, no recorded cases of Lyme disease in, in Costa Rica. But what there was in Costa Rica was essentially a big vacant penthouse suite of potential hosts that <laughs> would serve as yeah. perfect vectors and perfect um, hosts for this thing as soon as some asymptomatic infected tourist happened to wander into the right zone. Right. So that's what's happening now. What's happening now is you've got all these old pathogens finding new hosts that don't have much in the way of defenses against them. And these things are really good at host switching. Right. So... Um, one of the consequences of climate change is simply going to be an increase in emerging infectious diseases. And we're seeing that now. It was a paper that in Nature that came out almost oh, been 15 years ago now showing a timeline of epidemic outbreaks, epidemiological outbreaks. Right. And it just started, you know, back in the 1700s. And it was like womp, 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 womp. You get this almost exponential decline in the space between in the space between outbreaks um, and that's not going to get any better Ouch. they're suggesting yeah. that by um, what 2090 um, the damage caused by climate change by f sheer physical damage caused by extreme weather events will cost more than the entire global economy will be able to have in its coffers to fix so at that point, there's just not uh, either everybody volunteers and pitches in and fixes Miami <laughs> um, out of the goodness of their hearts, or you abandon those cities when they're flattened by the latest mega hurricane, or you just live in the ruins. Um, there's a, that's another element. We're also expecting, my, a year ago I read that, that uh, we were expecting all the arable land on the planet to be exhausted by 2070. Apparently that um, estimate has now been moved up to 2050 to 2060. Right. So um, I don't know if the word fucked even encompasses it. I think we might <laughs> have to come up with a new word, furged or goobled or something. That, wow. that the language does not encompass the level of catastrophe that we are in for.